So today I want to share with you some uh, pictures that we started purchasing actually several years ago um, back in I believe look at my notes here I think Alden said in about um, 1990 when he was in the horse industry selling carts and harnesses he started having harnesses made by a uh, a woman up in Washington, Sandra Hiller. I'll be posting her name and contact and website, but she made all of his leather harnesses and she had never made harnesses for miniature horses. And so she was very kind to work with him and uh, come up with a terrific harness that have been, uh, she's made, I don't know how many, 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 many leather harnesses that he's sold all around the United States. Well, in the process of Sandra working with leather, she started making pictures out of leather, very unique, very, very interesting. And we were fascinated from the beginning. And I'm gonna show you several of those today. Uh, I have gotten Sandra's permission to show these, but this is out of one solid piece of leather, and I'm gonna show them in a little bit more detail. Here is a prime example of somebody taking their craft, for her it was making harnesses for the driving horse, and coming up with this method that she really helped to develop. She learned it from somebody and then uh, really has taken it to a whole nother level, I believe. And uh, they're very fascinating. And this is now, uh, must be a passion because she has done many of these out of leather. And I'm gonna show you these a little bit more in detail. So the first picture I'm going to show you here is of the ram and I'm going to tilt it here. Hopefully you can see the dimension on this leather. This is one continuous piece of leather that she has uh, soaked, got it moist, stretched. It, you just would never dream that leather could do this and be expanded in this way. I think this might have been one of her very first pictures that she sold. I know it was early on and we were fascinated with what a person could do with a big old thick piece of cowhide. Now cowhide is you know at least a quarter of an inch maybe thicker and um, who knew that you could wet it, stretch it, mold it. So none of this is glued back on. It is the original piece of leather. Just amazing to me. The next piece I'm showing you here actually was done by her daughter. And uh, I believe this might have been her daughter uh, Corlin's very first piece and she's learned from her mom how to do the process and we just thought these giraffes were so unique i hope you can see the dimension here that the ears completely stand out the neck is stretched and uh, i hope this is getting a, a good picture and then of course in this one corlin then added paint to it, which just even gives it another whole look. This picture Alden saw posted on her site and uh, he just thought it was so unique, the old truck. And um, it was one of those pieces he saw and thought, oh, this would be fun to have. And uh, turn it sideways here. I hope you can see the mirrors are totally just popped right out. The grass all has texture to it and the trees and the mountains in the back. The fenders, of course, have dimension to it. And I'm hoping that this shows up. 
this mirrors here are all they're still attached but they're uh, the leather has been worked and stretched and these fine fine little pieces are just extended out from the leather and I'm going to show you one more now this piece is a kind of a fun piece has a lot of meaning in it for Alden this was uh, his first truck 1936 Ford pickup and uh, he said he bought it out of a junkyard for $50 in Kimball Minnesota when he was probably a sophomore and uh, he, Alden asked Sandra if she would uh, make this truck for him and uh, he got a picture of a truck and then the barn in the back actually happens to be a picture of the barn on his family's property back then and uh, she put the truck in, in the barnyard and it just makes for a really really fun picture to have and all of this of course has real dimension to it very very intriguing very very unique i've never ever seen this kind of leather work before you can see the mirror sticks way out and the fenders they these are all curved and the truck is all um, stretched she gets it wet and has some kind of a method and actually if you go to her website you can learn more about her process and then of course she paints them also she's done some fun things she's done some christmas ornaments out of leather and and i think some earrings and uh, but here she has taken a skill and has certainly expanded it and i really appreciate sandra hiller letting us show these uh, i just think they're so unique and thought maybe you would enjoy seeing them also so now i thought it would be fun to talk with you a little bit share with you about the little critters that i am making you know, I've never ever been interested in making little animals. Uh, just didn't even seem like it would be fun to do. And then I came across this book here now, almost a year ago, and they caught my eye. I just think these little animals are so clever. So I went out and I bought myself Louise um, Crow Wither. I guess is how she pronounces her name. Uh, I'll post that so you can see it more clearly on the site. Bought her book and it was a lovely book. In fact, her book this last year um, just won top awards in the UK for the quality. I don't know what all it was judged on, but it was a big deal for her book to get uh, this high uh, honor in the UK. Well. She probably would die if she saw what I did to her book. It's a lovely book, but it was so well glued and stitched, you could not lay it open to really use it for a pattern book. Well, I solved that problem because uh, <laughs> I cut it apart. And so I just put it in a three ring binder and uh, I have scratch paper in here for making notes because if you haven't discovered by now, I tend to change patterns up. And so I have certain things marked in this book already. I have made a number of these little animals. But this is a beautiful book and great pictures, great illustrations. And I've made a number of, of them and I probably will end up making all of these little critters in time. I'm actually making them for my great grandchildren. My grandchildren are way beyond. <laughs> They're going to be the mamas and the daddies now. I have one great grandchild that has uh, a fox. I made Freddy the fox for him and uh, the fox in here is called Charlotte but I made a little boy fox and so that's Freddy. But I just think these are so adorable. There's so much detail to them. Now, this is not for a beginner knitter. I will just tell you that. Um, there are, um, if you've had some experience with making garments and doing some uh, 
unusual decreases, lots of increases in tiny spaces, <laughs> then uh, this will not be difficult. But if you've not done that, I would not make this a first knitting project. Um, I've enjoyed the challenge. She's done a lot of really good, here, look at the duck. The duck is so cute. I'll show you the front page. I've got to make her Amelia the duck and her purse. Oh my goodness, a little tab on the side of her dress. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, her little French knickers, you know, the little girls all have to have French knickers. And then the shoes, I mean, look at the wardrobe of shoes. And then there's tennis shoes in here and oh my goodness, just a little bit of everything. But she has done really well with techniques in the back part of this book. So if you're up for a challenge um, and would like to do something fun, these are really great to do. I think the clothes just make them. And because she's done so much detail, it just makes them a little different than the average animal. And look at these adorable little tennis shoes. I mean, Nike, really. We could put a swish on them maybe, huh? <laughs> so. I've had people ask me about buying these from me. Well, first of all, I can't because there's somebody else's pattern. But <laughs> these went from, in my mind, $100 dolls or critters, whatever you want to call them. And then they went up to 200 in my mind thinking, oh my goodness, because you put so much time into them. And, and now, uh, in reality, they're, they're a thousand dollar toy. In other words, even if I could sell them, I would not want to. You could not recap your money for what it takes time-wise to make them because there is a lot of detail, but so much fun. I've made the raccoon. The raccoon lives in Arkansas now with a special little girl and um, and it's fun to be able to make them and uh, keep them for family. And so it went on to a, a little girl in Arkansas that her little special toy was raccoons and they couldn't find many raccoons. So we made her one. But I'm gonna show you uh, some things about the ones that I have here. I've learned on every one that I've made and this little guy right here, I made 100% according to the pattern. And, but I made him out of wool because I wanted to do a prototype. I wanted to see if I would really like making them or not. And uh, he's kind of, he's cute. This one probably will never leave my house. Wool is not what you want to use. I used it because I had it. And, um, and so he, he is super, super soft. Can't stuff him real tight. That's one of the reasons why wool doesn't work well, uh, unless you felted him, and that would be kind of a guess, and by gosh, if you tried to felt a little animal after it was made. Um, so he's soft. I couldn't get a tight stuffing because the yarn would continue to stretch. So he's just, like I say, he's my prototype. I wanted to make him, and if I enjoyed making him, then I was going to invest in the correct yarn. And uh, I thought, you know, I think he's, I think he's kind of fun. So the proper yarn actually is a cotton, and it has a little bit of acrylic in it. And I'll grab a skein of it here. And. Um, it actually comes from the UK. I've not looked here in the States because of COVID. I haven't gone out to the yarn stores and really investigated, uh, but this is 78% cotton and 22% acrylic. So the nice thing about this is if um, it got soiled, you could clean it. It would stand some washing. I wouldn't put it in the washing machine and dryer, but it, it would take a good soap and water and you could, you could wash it. So the cotton blend is the best. And this is really nice to work with because it gives a more solid, uh, firmer texture to work with. So the stone washed um, 
sheep G's. And um, I get it from the United States from a discount yarn online that's called Webs. And they have a lot of different yarns. And this really isn't all that expensive. I think this is a um, sport weight yarn. And it is, um, I was looking for the ounces here, I think it's 50 ounces. And it's not quite six dollars for this. And uh, it's just the perfect weight yarn to work with. It's nice to work with. I've worked with 100% cotton and honestly, I just refuse to work with it. It's so non-forgiving. There's no stretch to it. So it's very, very hard on my hands. I have just enough arthritis in my hands that um, the cotton is just so non, no stretch to it whatsoever. It's just not soft. And um, so I just refuse to work with 100% cotton. I normally don't like acrylic, but for in these toys, it's absolutely the perfect yarn. This is an example of, <laughs> she's a little bit bigger than the other ones. This is an example of 100% cotton. I had it, I thought, well, after I did the one in wool, I was going to see if I if I liked making them a second time around. And so she's cute and she'll somebody will fall in love with her. She's a little bit bigger than, for instance, this guy here is made with all the proper yarn, the little fox. You can see the difference in the sizes of the head. This gauge was a little bit bigger. I've changed the pattern up because the way the book tells you to do it is the head is totally separate from the body and then you sew the two together. Well, you get a floppy neck and I didn't like that. So I came up with a method that my neck still has a little give to it, not not much, and uh, but it's not floppy. And so what I did with the neck is I put some uh, stiffening in there I took actually some uh, woven padding and or compressed I guess and it's this stuff here uh, you could put it in like a cushion for a chair or something and I just cut off a chunk I rolled it up super super tight and then I sewed around it a few times and made it probably about oh three inches long and I stuffed it up the neck and then I padded around it and it just gives that neck the neck still has some movement but it gives it stability it's not totally floppy like what this one is so I've made a big change to the pattern to accommodate for this stuffing but I think it's a very very good idea to do that and the clothing oh my goodness the clothing is so much fun to make and um, of course you know the rabbits have to have a tail and the fox has a darling little tail there's a squirrel and he has quite a tail I've not made him yet so then I have another one to show you this is the ram now the ram I made the head separate from the body um, or I didn't make it separate from the body but I this is before I put stuffing in the neck to stabilize it so I'm actually going to unsew him and I'm going to put that stabilizer in there and sew him back up because he is in two separate pieces I can do that she does not have you make it that way however she has you make the head separate and it's all uh, you know you pull your yarn through at the bottom so the head is totally concealed and that the neck here on the body part so you're sewing two flat edges together and um, I'm going to fix this one uh, and I think my method actually works better so here's Miss Mouse. Look at her tail. She's terrific. I think she is just adorable. I mean, what young child just wouldn't fall in love with playing with her? I added the little bow to her hair. I felt she needed that. But so much fun. And you can just, you know, let your imagination run. And they're long-legged, but they're soft, they're cuddly, and um, 
I must be going back into my second childhood. But you know, I was one of those kids that was probably playing with dolls until I was in the eighth grade. I lived way out in the country and there weren't many people around. And so you had to uh, make your own fun. So I had my own dolls and made doll clothes and I'm going back into my second childhood, I guess. So now we have the hedgehog. Now she turned out kind of funny because she's so much bigger than everybody else. And I thought, oh my goodness, what, what happened? She should be littler, if anything. You know, hedgehogs are not that big. Well, she turned out to be, I call her my big bone gal. Well, what I discovered is my other dolls are all done on a size two needle. This is what happens when you don't look at what needle you pick up, and I did her on a size three. So you can see the difference She's quite a bit longer here. Look how much taller she is. And uh, the, the stitch count is all the same. That's what happens when you grab the needle and not really look closely. But you know, I love her. I thought, well, I could take her apart and redo her. I'm not gonna do that. And she has all this wonderful little fun, fun, fun little, Bump, bumps <laughs> and um, on her and that was time consuming but fun to make so I I think she's adorable we're going to leave her just like that because we were not all created to look the same I have on my needle right now um, a little dress that's going to be for Here's the little dress that I'm working on now, and it has all these fun little stitches, and pretty soon it'll have some buttons back here and finish off. It's a long dress, and then she's gonna have a bright pink coat, and what I'm referring to is my floppy-eared bunny. So I've got her arms made, and uh, she needs some legs yet, so I will be getting those legs made and sewed on. Sewing on the items are is actually probably the trickiest part. It's hard to get everything just lined up 100% perfect. And then I thought, well, why? Why have it perfect? This is what gives it character. So if you were really to look at the ears, this one's up a little higher than this one. And I thought about taking it apart. And I thought, no way, you know? That just gives it a little more character. So we're leaving the ears alone. But if you're looking for a fun project that maybe be out of the norm of what you would normally do, I encourage you to play around with these little critters um, you know my like I say my grandkids are well past you know playing with these but they're at the process of giving us great grandbabies so my great grandbabies will have a whole farmyard full of dressed <laughs> little characters and um, they're stretching me because some of this is um, new stitches that I hadn't done before. So it's challenging and I like a challenge. I don't like to be bored with my knitting. So I'm always looking for new things. And, and this is a winner here and I will be making more of those and I'm sure you will see them as I get them done. So I hope you enjoyed seeing all of my little critters here and uh, I'll be posting more information about the artist that developed this pattern. She took on quite a, a undertaking because every head is a little bit different. They're not all the same. So lots and lots of detail. So thank you for watching and we'll have something new and exciting next week. Have a good week. Bye now.